Here's the different dye colors I'll be using today, but I'm only showing the dyeing process with one color. So for setup, you'll need a large pot that can hold at least six gallons of water. I've got three gallons in there for a whole bottle of liquid dye, though the directions say that that's enough water for half a bottle. I've found that putting an entire bottle of liquid dye in three gallons of water makes a really strong color for broom corn. The powder dye packets equal about half of a liquid bottle, so keep that in mind when you're purchasing your colors and making your dye baths. You'll need twice as much powder as you will liquid. And once the dye is in the water, put a lid on the pot and let it come to a boil while setting up the rest of the soaking containers. Before the broom corn goes into the dye bath, it'll need to soak for about five to 10 minutes in pure distilled white vinegar. You can use any container that will allow the broom corn to be fully submerged. This is just what I had on hand. I used an entire gallon of vinegar because I've got four pounds of broom corn, which is enough for about four or five brooms. Don't worry, I'm not making that many brooms this month. It's just easier to dye it all at once. Make sure to move the broom corn around a bit so all of it gets in the vinegar. After the dye bath comes a salt bath. I poured about three pounds of salt in a five gallon bucket and I added two gallons of water to start. Once the broom corn is in the salt bucket, you'll be able to see how much more water that you'll need to add. Lastly, you'll need another five gallon bucket filled with clear water to rinse the broom corn at the end of the process. Because I'm dyeing four colors, I've split my broom corn into four equal-ish piles. I'll be splitting each pile up into smaller manageable piles for each color as I dye them. I'm gonna show you how to create an ombre effect first, and then I'll show you how to dye the broom corn as one solid color. For the ombre effect, you'll want to put the broom corn in the pot with the ends kind of sticking out. As you're pulling the broom corn out of the vinegar, you want to squeeze as much of the extra vinegar out as you can. You can push the broom corn down into the dye and hold it there for a minute or so, and this will allow the dye to soak that middle section of the broom corn just enough to color it. You can also push it down and hold it in place with the lid so you don't get hot steam on your hands and face. Just be careful not to let go of the lid quickly because the broom corn will spring up. I let the broom corn soak for about 30 to 40 minutes before taking it out. You can leave it for longer, it just depends on how deep of a color you want. As you're taking it out of the dye, be careful not to touch that bottom part where it's really wet so you don't get burned. If you're really concerned about being burned, you can use pot holders or oven mitts. Just don't use anything that you don't want to have dyed. Put the dyed broom corn directly into the salt bath and add more water if necessary. Let it soak in the salt bath for about five to 10 minutes or at least until it's no longer steaming from the hot broom corn. After the salt bath, put your broom corn into the clear water and give it a good swirl and mix around to wash off any extra dye. Leave the broom corn in there for about 10 minutes before pulling it out and placing it on an old towel. Now for round two, I'll be showing you how to dye the entire stalk of broom corn as one solid color. Again, let it soak in the vinegar for five to 10 minutes before putting it in the dye bath. Once 
When you're ready to put it in the die, it's easier if you grab smaller chunks at a time. You'll want to kind of wrap it around the inside of the pot and use a pair of tongs to push it below the surface. You might have to hold it there for a second or two with the tongs so the boiling water will soften the broom corn and make it a bit easier to bend. Now, you can avoid doing this very weird method <laughs> by using a really big pot or container to dye your broom corn in so that it's fully submerged, but it's going to require a lot more dye and water, and unless you're dyeing, say, 15 pounds or more of broom corn, it's not very efficient because you'll have a lot of dye left over. So unless you run a broom shop or make brooms for a living, I would recommend not going that route. When I'm done dyeing things, I like to keep my dye to use for future projects because it's still good to use and I try to be as close to zero waste as possible. Once you've got all the broom corn in the pot, place the lid on, but leave it cracked just a tiny bit so it doesn't boil over and drip dye all over. So after about 15 minutes, I checked my broom corn and it's still pretty light. So I ended up leaving it for a total of 45 minutes. Just check on it every so often to make sure it's still fully submerged and that your water level hasn't gone down dramatically. Once you're happy with the color, repeat the process the same as before. Salt bath for five to 10 minutes and then clear water soak for about 10 minutes. Now here's the ombre next to the fully dyed broom corn. I really like this color and I'm probably gonna be using it again in the future. I know the container said that it was gonna be this light rose pink, but it ended up being this like almost fiery red color and it's really, really pretty in person. Here's the other colors that I dyed. The teal is on the right and I don't really like how it came out. I was expecting a bit more of a blue color and it didn't take very well to the broom corn. So I ended up adding the dark green dye into the teal and I got this foresty green color, which you see on the center bunches and the left bunches. And I really like that color. It's kind of like a swamp witch vibe and I'm digging it. Here's teal again on the left and black on the right. I've yet to find a black dye that actually dyes black. They usually just turn out this kind of dark, purpley, almost eggplant color, which I don't mind, but I really want black. So if you've got a recommendation for a black dye, please post it in the comments and I'm gonna try it. Lastly, we'll need to dry out the broom corn. So let's roll this up and head outside. Find a sunny spot outside and lay the broom corn out flat to help it dry faster. It was about 80, 85 degrees when I did this, so these dried in about five hours. You can leave it to dry inside if your house is warm. It'll just take about a day or so to be completely fully dry. Yes, I'm wearing all black in 85 degrees. Yes, I'm sweating my face off. No, I'm not going to change my wardrobe. So while we're outside, I thought I would show you some of the flowers blooming in our garden right now. Please ignore the fact that I desperately need to weed and cut the grass. Just look at the flowers, please. 